Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Nunley Math. I'm your host, Aaron Nunley. Thank you so much for joining us here today as we continue our discussion of polynomials. We've already talked about um, how we would name polynomials. We've already talked about how we would add and subtract polynomials, how we multiply polynomials. And then in our last lesson, we talked about a special pattern that we can look for to make multiplying polynomials easier or quicker. Um, that was the trinomial squares pattern. Um, for the sake of brevity, I'm not going to review that with you here today, even though um, if you wanted to, you could go back and rewatch that video on special patterns in polynomials part one or part A. Um, what I am going to do is just go ahead very quickly and put up the answers to my students' homework from last night. Um, if you are not one of my students, you can just skip past this page. Um, this is something that I had my students do because we are not currently meeting in classes due to the um, the social distancing from the coronavirus. So um, if you're in my class, I would go ahead and suggest you check these answers. If you have any of these that give you any trouble or if you want to talk to me about any uh, talk with me about any of these, you can certainly um, go to our online learning center and send me a message and I'll, I'll communicate with you directly. For those of you that are not in my class and just want to skip on past this, you are certainly welcome to do that as well. Today we're going to talk about the difference of squares pattern. Notice that I have two binomials here. I have the quantity x minus 5, that is a linear binomial. And I have the quantity x plus 5, that is a linear binomial. I want to multiply those together. Now, just like in our last lesson, you could do this just by using our rules for multiplying polynomials, and you would be just fine. However, we're going to find that if we can recognize certain patterns, doing this long term is going to be much, much simpler. And in our next unit, when we talk about factoring, it's going to save you an awful lot of trouble. So I'm going to walk through one or two of these the long way using our multiplying patterns, our, our, our multiplying rules, and then we're going to talk about some things we notice. So if I have x minus 5 times x plus 5. The first thing I want to do is multiply the first item in each set of parentheses together. That's x times x, or x squared. I'm then going to take the x times the plus 5 and get plus 5x. Then I'm going to take the negative 5 over here and multiply it times both items in the second parentheses. That's negative 5 times x, which is negative 5x, and negative 5 times positive 5, which is minus 25 or plus negative 25 if you prefer. Notice when we go to combine these middle terms in the middle, you have a plus 5x and a minus 5x. When you add those together because they are like terms, something interesting happens. We keep our x squared, but that plus 5x and minus 5x becomes 0x, meaning we're going to leave it out. And then of course you've got this minus 25 on the end. Now, when I look back here at the beginning, you'll notice that I made the first term in each set of parentheses red, and I made the second term in each set of parentheses green. I did that on purpose because if you'll remember from our previous lessons, I was color coding those so that you could see um, see what matched and what was different and, and where things were located. I made them the same here, first of all, to point out the fact that they have the same value. You've got a red x and a red x, You've got a green 5 and a green 5. But notice the signs in the middle are different. When we did the trinomial squares patterns, we either had both minus signs or both plus signs, and that created a pattern. But a different pattern pops out when the numbers are the same, when the, the x and the x are the same, the 5 and the 5 are the same, but the signs are different. Anytime that happens and we multiply it together, what's in the middle is going to be a set of opposite values, a plus 5x and a minus 5x. And because those are opposite values, when we add them together, they're going to become a 0. You'll keep the x squared, you'll keep the 25, but what's in the middle should go away. Now, if we learn to recognize this, we're eventually going to be able to skip this middle step and jump straight to the end. Let's do another one of these. Notice again, the first term in each set of parentheses is the same. The last term in each set of parentheses is the same. The only thing that's different is the sign in the middle. So when we go to multiply that together the long way, y times y is y squared. y times negative 3 is negative 3y. Positive 3 times y is plus 3y. And 3 times 3 makes 9. But since this is a positive 3 and a negative 3, 
we get a negative 9. Notice once again in this example, a negative 3y and a plus 3y, these are opposites of one another. When I add them together, they're going to make a 0. So I'll bring the y squared down, and I'll bring the 9 down. Notice I got a little typo there where I left that as an x squared. That happens when you uh, do a lot of cutting and pasting, and you aren't paying close enough attention. So let me go ahead and change that to a y squared. Wow, that's really, really bad. Sorry about that. And we'll click off of that. Here's one for you. 2x times 2x is 2x squared. 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x. Notice I made that one purple because um, the 2 times the negative 1 is what makes the negative 2. I've got a 1 times a 2x, which is a positive 2x. And I've got a 1 times a negative 1, which is a negative 1. Again, notice that the first item is 2x times itself. The last item is going to be the 1 times itself, or a 1 times negative 1 if you want to think about the negative sign. And once again, the middle terms are going to become a 0. So 2x squared is 4x squared. 1 is 1, and there's your solution. If you're feeling really brave, you can go ahead and pause the video, try this one on your own. You may even want to try it but with skipping the, uh, the middle step. Um, I'm going to assume you've already done that and you've restarted to see if you are correct. So I'm going to take x cubed times x cubed, which is x to the 6, or x cubed squared. x cubed times 4 is plus 4x. Negative 4 times x cubed, which is negative 4x. And negative 4 times 4, which is negative 16. Once again, those middle terms are going to disappear. Now, we do have a name for this. This is called the differences of squares pattern or the difference of squares pattern. Notice when the numbers in the parentheses match and the signs are different. We're going to end up taking the a times the a, so we're going to end up with a perfect square value for that first value. The middle terms will disappear, and what's left will be the b times negative b or negative b squared. You get a perfect square at the beginning, a perfect square at the end. That's your differences of squares pattern. Look up here. x to the 6 is a perfect square, x cubed times itself. 16 is a perfect square because it's 4 times itself. 4 squared is 2x times itself. 1 is 1 times itself. y squared is y times y. 9 is 3 times 3. x squared is x times x. 25, square, uh, 25 is 5 times 5, so it is also a perfect square. Anytime you have a perfect square and a perfect square with a minus sign in the middle, you know it was created using this kind of a pattern. Now, I do also want to point out that some people get caught up in what I refer to as the sum of squares pattern. The sum of squares pattern, this should have been corrected, it did not get saved because I know I typed over that once. The sum of squares pattern, there is nothing we can multiply together that is going to give us a perfect square plus a perfect square like this. It does not happen. Remember we learned in our last video if these were both plus signs, you would end up with 2ab in the middle. If they're both minus signs, you would get minus 2ab in the middle. There is no way for you to get a plus sign in the middle because in order for these middle terms to disappear, your signs have to be different. If your signs are different, when you multiply them, they will always end up being a negative or minus. Now, you need to make sure you memorize all four of our patterns. These are going to be very important for us here in the next few weeks. Uh, the trinomial squares pattern says if you have a plus b times itself, you're going to get a perfect square, a perfect square, and the middle is going to be the a times the b twice. If that's unfamiliar to you, you'll want to go back and watch the previous video. There is a differences version of this where you have a minus sign in the middle. Notice, still a perfect square, still a perfect square. The only thing that changes is instead of a plus sign in the middle, you have a minus sign in the middle. We can now add the difference of squares pattern to this where um, you get a plus b times a minus b. That makes the middle terms disappear. And then we talked about the fact that sum of squares does not exist. I make sure I mention that a couple times because that's a real trouble spot for a lot of students. 
Now, if I were a student in Mr. Nunley's class, I would now stop the video. On our title slide, there was a set of problems for you. You'll want to make sure that you go online, you find those uh, problems, you work those out before advancing on. For the sake of making sure you understand, since we're not meeting here together, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click real quick to the last slide. Make sure you wash your hands, by the way. Uh, keep yourselves safe. I'm going to advance to the last slide. And I'm going to show you the solutions to tonight's homework. Now, obviously, with the solutions being given there, if you choose not to do your homework, it's going to be really hard for me to know that. However, you're only hurting yourself. Um, I'm not going to be able to monitor your understanding like I would in a classroom, so it's going to be on you to make sure that you are um, doing what's needed in order for you to understand. Um, there you go. Try your homework. Check your answers on this video. Make sure you check in uh, here pretty soon. I'll have another video loaded for you um, for our, our next section, all right? Hope you guys are all staying safe, uh, staying healthy. Wish you all the best of luck. We'll see you all real soon, okay? Take care. Bye-bye.